could potentially come through from Rogue. We will see in a second whether that's the case. Um, you know, if that is the case, then yeah, maybe it flips it on its head. But one thing I do know for sure is that we're going to have Ooh. the Dokubi is not banned out. It's going to be Flores instead. And are we going to be looking back at not only this banning phase, but the map banning phase and asking questions of Rogue come the end of this one? Freshy, not so big brain, huh? <laughs> He is gesturing and asking me why if they're not banned Dokubi. And I imagine he'll be straight in the DMs of Tristan saying, right, why have you guys been massive Muppets? I imagine we'll find out. When you find out fresh, please message me and let me know exactly what the game plan is. I'm very curious to know. Either way, Forrest is the one taking off the board indeed, which probably leans towards things like shields, towards trying to make sure that utility can't be cleaned out super easily in these rounds. The last two to come through are going to be the Azami and the Valkyrie. The Nukban, not all that big a surprise given how often we see Cry and playing that operator. So a little bit of targeting mixed in there, but the Flora is definitely one we all look at and go, hmm, not too sure about that one, Chief. I think we're going to find out over the next few rounds, particularly the next six, whilst Heroic are on the attack. And round one, there is the Dokkabe on the side of Heroic. Grizzly bringing it along just as predicted by Fresh. Last time we saw them play here, they used that heavily to get those players in, particularly Benja Doom, to get them in and causing mischief, causing damage to the defenders. Rogue. I hope they've got a plan up their sleeve because if not, it could be good night in terms of the major. If they lose here, it gets very complicated. Um, a straight win for them will guarantee them a position in the major. Any win will do. But if Heroic take a win, Generally speaking, Na'Vi have to match or better what Heroic do. So a 7-3, they have to get 7-3, 7-2, 7-1. They have to match or better it. But if this goes to overtime, that's where it gets really tricky. And Na'Vi could actually send Rogue through to the major. Part of the thinking I'm, I'm looking at here is for Rogue not to ban away the Decay Beat, it's a sign of confidence that they feel they have the answer and the response. And I was looking in this first round to see, is there a mute on side? Yes, there is. Though gadgets are being utterly destroyed by Uno here as he rifles on through the site. Well, likely lose it. Oh, no, he keeps it going, jumps it through, what? but can't quite shoot the jammer. So this is the thing you can do. You can jump into it, but the momentum carries you through and out the other side. Obviously, when you jam, you don't drop like a lead balloon to the ground. Your drone keeps on moving. If you time it right, you can jump through the jam, which is what he did, but I don't think he managed to get rid of it. In fact, no, it's gone now either way. So in a way, Rogue have kind of gone, okay, we've got a mute. We can deal with this a little bit. It's not a big issue. They've still got one in back pocket, for example. My biggest worry for them here, really, is they've now been counter-countered by the Twitch. So suddenly now Heroic are the ones fully back in control and the Rogue are the ones who've got to try and figure out how they get themselves out of what could be a sticky situation. Spice is underneath at the minute, potentially he needs to be careful just exactly where his footfalls find him. Kanto is down in the library as well, so two to be dealt with. Benja moving up the red stairs could be the one to do it, though. Spite is in the corridor at the minute, and there is a potential for these two to have a clash if this continues. Doom is just taking the attention at the minute while that red stairs push continues from Benja. He's not worried about the bottom floor. Spite's going to take a lot of damage here, but Benja's gone on into sight. He's got himself one on to Leon, he's going to continue pushing forward, and this is going to be Rogue having to react, and there's not going to be many of them left to react, as You just saw exactly what the game plan was as well, making use of those calls, finding those roamers that were out hovering down towards our studio, and picking them up for free, and Benja, as you said, has found his way in towards Sight from Red Stairs, leaving Deepak in a one versus four. He finds one for himself. There's still 65 seconds on the clock. For Heroic to lose this would be a massive slip-up. It certainly would in a 3v1. It's up to Deepak, and we know that Deepak is a bit of a clutch master. We've seen him do it countless times, but it's going to be a big ask for him here in Aviator and Games 1v3. He's on the SMG. He's looking for a first kill. We think he's almost checking 90, but that shot from Study tells him that there's no danger to be found from that side. Instead, he's going to have to go in and try and stop the diffuser going down, but just a fraction of a second after it does, Doom finds the final kill, and that is the first attacking round going to heroic is that a sign of things to come very possibly and this is the danger of things to like the lion the decay be stacking up alongside each other 
feed that into your entries and let them sink. And sing they did. Again, with a little bit of assistance coming in from the Twitch drone there as well to help them take out those mute jammers on the way through. Wonder if we'll see attacker repicked attacker in here now that there's the mute still on side bar. once again. I'm not at all trying to say, by the way, that mute is kind of the be all end all counter towards Decay, but it does definitely soften her impact. However, still a very, very powerful operator that at least for a second here, Gris is looking to move away from and bring along that Twitch himself. Oh, an interesting as well. change. Okay. Um, I suppose it depends uh, from heroic side just how much of a roam presence they expect, um, and also you know what is their attacking plan? Where are they looking at getting into? How much do they need to deal with those roamers? If they don't need to deal with them, leave them out there in the cold and just push direct to site. Then it may be um, they just don't feel it's a requirement. And the officer on side in the hands of Uno, um, Uno, sorry, might just suggest that that is the case. Get in there, get those shields down, um, and try to get a plant in behind them. But they need to be aware. Deepex down there. He's got a Nitro in hand. And he's going to be the one to try and deny. I think what I'm already thinking here is because they've changed the way for a number of operators, they still have the Decay on side, right? But Lion's gone. It screams to me they're going more direct towards site. They want to make use of the Ossa, gear themselves up towards a push in towards things. You want the Twitch to soften up a lot of the utility inside of site. And well, really, the Decay just to make sure they can't come on the roam up against you, for example. You can't exactly well place a or carry a mute jammer with you and keep yourself constantly blocked out at all times. It does kind of give a little bit of flank control alongside the usual drones that you'd see. So I think overall from Heroic, Again, really good game plan. Nice Crying on the vigil, just trying to roam around that study side, but is ultimately going to be forced back into sight. Rogue um, again, just holding foul of that door could be game plan, um, not allowing them necessarily to do what they want to do. Spike going to look for a challenge onto study side, and he's going to find Benja with a beauty. He needs 15 kills today, right, to break the 100. Spite does, yes. 85. 85 for Spite, 88 for Cryon, um, and 92 for Benja. Okay, depending on length of game, they may, they may well all break it, but Spoit needs to have a real screamer of a game. For now, at least, it's Uno working his way up 90 with that officer we were talking about earlier on. Just a limited angle of control. You haven't got to worry so much about doing a full map clear when you've got the Decay on side. It does let teams move that little bit quicker. Mello expecting to find someone off towards Red Stairs, though no one present, I don't think, right now. They've already dipped away. You've got Deepak and Spoit down in the basement, so understandable they've got concerns here, but don't want to spend too long chasing shadows. Continuing to push up the red stairs. They're going to be putting the Orsa shield uh, in trophy doorway, looking to get a line on into sight. Grizzly manages to level things up for four. Takes Leon down, quiet from him in the first couple of rounds um, and leaves Heroic with an opportunity potentially, but there's only a minute left on the clock and they don't really have much in terms of control with Deepak still underneath Nitro in hand. There's a real danger there if they try to go in and get the diffuser down. A lot of the floor in this site will be destroyed destructible and there'll be plenty of opportunity for him to deal deadly damage with that nitro in hand nade from underneath unsuccessful does not connect with anybody 38 seconds left to go Kanto holding a tight angle onto astro window and heroic just feeling a little bit stalled out oh, spoil could get well cheeky here Super cheeky. If Uno doesn't read this properly and he walks in, face checks it, he's screwed. Has gone in for it as well. The knife round the back. No sprays the wrong spot. And Uno pulls off and finds the kill. That's not how that was scripted to go. But he's found himself a 2K heroic in full control once again. And what started off looking at least potentially like Rogue could fight their way back in. This one could still go against them. A smart call from Uno there to pull off the plant as well. Get himself across and get into a much safer spot to get this plant down. Uno's had an absolute round here. Just, he just fantastic reaction to the chaos that Spite just injected into the round. And then that play to get off the diffuse, move, change, get it down again. Absolutely beautiful round so far from Uno and Deepak once again, just as he did in round one, finds himself one versus three, finds himself cut down at the end of the round. And that's going to be a second to Heroic, including a plant. Oh dear. And the problem now for Rogue. Rogue Des is those palms will get sweaty very, very quickly as these rounds start to mount up. Each will become more difficult after the loss of the last. I do round back to stage three of last year when Rogue were one of the teams to pioneer very aggressive attacks on this map that didn't require hard breaches. I'm not at all saying that that same play style is going to work now or that Rogue are the same team as they were back in stage three of last year. They absolutely aren't. They've had roster changes. But I do think they'll come into this feeling relatively confident about 
their ability to attack on Villa. And it's not to write off this first half and say it's okay for them to go 5-1, 6-0, 4-2. No, they have got to sort things out. If this next round goes against them, I expect a tactical timeout. They'll have the conversation because they know they need to get two or three rounds on the board in this first half. Moving sites once again, then this time it's going to be down to the ground floor. It's going to be dining and kitchen. No success to be found on the top floor. So we will move along. Heroic are going to look for top floor control, I would imagine. Um, we've got the book in the hands of June. We've got Sledge with Benger, a usual pick for him, but it will just mean really being able to put that Sledge hammer to use if they get in above, tear up that floor and make it uncomfortable for Rogue on site. I'm just not sure if Rogue get forced away from site, how much joy they're going to have being able to. To get back in and retake at this point for sure well let's see how things don't go then if they can start to turn things back around for now at least heroic a good couple of changes in terms of who's playing what role you know back onto playing on that ace we've got grizzly back on the decay like in round one and mellow on the lion so very much looking to rein in these roamers that are coming through from rogue also not forgetting as well that obviously for a few seconds leon will find himself in trouble when being called out that cardiac sensor won't be able to be pointed skyward so that is another thing to consider right now they've got a lot of folks coming in out towards this west side i mean he can but he can also get shot in the face while doing it but now at least they keep themselves alive and do slightly dip their way back playing around that mute gemma like reference but what a great pinch coming in from heroic and towards red corridor one coming in from the west one from the south and they get the close down there's two kills coming in as spoit just runs into the waiting loving arms of mellow and it's a five versus three the problem here for, for Rogue is that Heroic have really got the bit between, between the teeth now. They're going in, they're winning every single gunfight. There's tight angles, difficult challenges. It doesn't matter to them. They're all the same and they all look easy. Five versus three. Who knows there, but Leon's going to send a Nitro nice straight reach. out. He manages to get oh. shot out and he shoots the thrower as well. Unbelievable players from Uno as his great game continues. Just such a good read on the situation there as well. Anticipating the C4 coming out of Leon, shooting it out, waiting for the swing. Just had an absolute read on that situation. Poor Leon feeling more like a buck than a player at this point. As down he goes as well. It's another dire looking round. Heroic in a five versus two. That tactical timeout has to come at some point, I feel here, Tim. As they're down to a five versus one. Make it flawless. Give yourself a break, boys, because you need to have that conversation. Heroic are flying. It's just getting worse and worse for Rogue at the minute, ending, as you say, around three with a flawless round. And right now, I just can't help but think back to those, uh, you know, the post -ma the pre-match comments, sorry, from, from Anne and Fresh about the map choice, about the recent history of Rogue on Villa versus Heroic and the expectation of that Dockerby ban that just didn't come along. And now Rogue massively on the back foot. I'm just concerned that they've lost themselves, you know, a possible place at the major here in the map ban phase. <sighs> map bans, op bans, take your pick. Ultimately, you've still got to play the same game that your opponent needs to. And it feels so far that Rogue are not. The one thing I will say for them, I can think of a number of times historically where Rogue have come out after winning a game, 7-3, 7-4, and have said, look, we lost the first two or three rounds. We were very slow at getting into things. The energy wasn't there. Comms weren't up. There was a lot of things just not as they normally are. And tactical timeouts can be a great reset for that sort of thing. So the boys here really got to get themselves back on kilter and get themselves fighting in. Otherwise, Heroic are going to steamroll their way through here to have that shot at the Major and drag Rogue into hell. If something doesn't drastically change here during this tactical timeout, like I said, Rogue could easily end up 6-0 here. This is going in absolute rapid time at the minute. And I've said it a couple of times, Des, and I'm going to say it again. And that is that Rogue, for me, in stage three, after winning that major, they have looked a little bit inconsistent. Um, you know, they've seemed to have, have struggled to deliver the same sort of form and performance. And there hasn't been too much of a concern. They've still done well. They've got four victories, got themselves up into the top half of the table where they need to be but this is the problem when you don't hit those results week in week out you end up in these final play day slug fests for qualifications to major tournaments and they could well be on the wrong end of a haymaker from heroic that's it, that's it. And I hear even some, a couple of changes coming in. And I actually like Heroic's read here. Is rather than play the same stuff you have done for the first three rounds that Rogue have probably had a conversation to try and adapt to, they change things up again. They've now got a Jackal coming in from Mello as well. So maybe when it feels like Rogue are okay, okay, we've got an answer to the Decay B. What's Heroic's response? Just drop it out of the lineup entirely. I love it. 
And it's potentially going to do the same job. Uh, you know, the Jackal is going to go in there and make it difficult for the Romans. Not quite in the same scale as the Dokkabi. It's not going to affect every single operator all at once for the defenders. Um, but it is not going to make life easy. Benjo has managed to get himself in. He's looking for vertical nades. Not going to find one um, as the player just moves himself away. Kanto is actually going to drop down here, trying to support a spite. And it looks like Rogue have decided to actively take the fight to Heroic. I don't hate that either. I was going to say in the timeout, like, realistically, what can they do here? They can sit back on site and probably get slapped by a superior execution comp, then carry on as they are, which is one or two players kind of roaming, but also kind of not. Or they can commit even harder into the roam itself. And I feel here, it's not so much they've gone super hard into the roam, but they have sent more players out to keep busy. They've got two players playing down below, for example. You've got Crying hanging out inside a basement looking to cause a little bit of bother. I do like it. Is it going to be super effective knowing there's a jackal on the field? Time will tell. But that really then comes down to Mello's diligence in hunting down these roamers. It does feel better from Rogue at the minute. It feels like it's been more effective. Just sort of anecdotally, we're past halfway in the round. They just feel a little bit more stable. They haven't lost anybody yet. They've not got into any bad positions, bad gunfights that they haven't been able to do anything with. My concern is, are Heroic just going to say, yeah, that's fine, you have that area of the map. We're just going straight into sight and we're going to overwhelm the defenders that are in there because right now, that is what could potentially happen. And Crying's patience is one thing, but Juma's got a flank drone sat on him as well, so he tries to move forward. He's in, he's in hot water. Benja walks in and finds Spoit as well, the dream start you're looking for. So even though Rorug, it feels, have played the first two minutes of this round better, Heroic so far looking unfazed. Benja halfway to the eight that he needs for the 100 kills in stage three. Uno manages to get himself one. Crying does find Benja. There won't be any more for him this round. Leon onto Grizzly. Ooh, and that's going to leave annoying. us now 3v3 with Rogue fighting back. But Leon is low health once again. Final Toxic Babe canister goes as well. And all of a sudden, Rogue managed to find themselves in the lead here in the round. Uno is down. It's Melo. He's super low health. There's going to be very little he can do in the final 17 seconds. Surely as soon as he steps across, oh. Oh, he manages to find the kill onto Leon on the reverse angle. Gets Uno back on his feet. Des. Got to try and make a plant happen though as well. Mello crossing in and going for a real shallow plant here as well. Do they know about crying? He's been flanking all round long and he might have found himself in a spot here as well. Down about half HP. Uno finds one. No. They clutch it out. That's unreal. Even with a massive hero play coming out of Leon. Heroic swing it back. Heroic have come into this game with only one single focus and that is to rip that major spot out of the cold dead hands of Rogue and that is exactly what Uno might just have done. What a round from him. I've picked up on him a couple of times, Des. He's had some real rounds so far. This is turning out to be a life game for him if this carries on. That this is unbelievable. What a performance from Uno so far. Everyone knows Uno's name, but not many kind of see the big performances that we often associate with big names. But as you said, Tim, if this is that game that you win, that gives you the best chance possible of making the major and knocks out the current major champions, you're absolutely laughing. I think Leon will be really frustrated after that round as well. He got three kills on the smoke, sat around a gaming, one out on towards 90, a couple around a vault as well, just really taking control of that side of the map, but it still wasn't enough. And to frustrate things even further, Uno and Melo were on like, what, five HP? They were like less than, a, less than a bullet to death. Like you could have done anything and they'd have died in that instance. Throwing a flashbang, they'd have died, but they could not find the shots. Again, massive props to Heroic for that. But my God, Rogue, that's not the kind of stuff that makes a champion. Oh, you cheeky, cheeky devil. You deserve that. Mello, he's going to cut Spike down despite the damage that was done to him. And I tell you what, looking at Mello's health, Des, it wasn't enough damage that was done to him. Rogue, yes, need to do something. They need to inject uh, that x-factor into this performance to get them back into it and maybe that was the attempt that would have done it but spite cut down before the round really <laughs> began what a swing from dick peck absolutely beautiful these two teams are just wailing on each other they are i want to kind of clarify as well for leon in the last round it was two kills plus a down it was a player down inside vault but just to correct that miscount either way this has started out as you say an absolute bloodbath and for once rogue got themselves a man advantage sure spoit went a little bit crazy with the very very start of that round but has got themselves into a spot now where they've managed to pull two back so for heroic they've got a fight for the first time from a numbers disadvantage and still make this work 
Heroic are just looking like they've got the answer to everything at the minute. That's the problem for Rogue. Um, it just no matter what they put in front of them, you know, Rogue cannot lose that round four. There's like, you know, let's be honest about it. And that's going to hurt the mental. There's no two ways about it. That's going to make it very difficult for Rogue to continue, uh, you know, in this game, in a mentality whereby they can bounce back. Right now, they need to get things underway. They need to get around. They just need to stop the rot. They do. They've got three players as well all squared up across this northeast side of the map. Crying looking to be the kind of front point of opposition coming in towards Master Bedroom side. As we hear that scan come out of the Lion. Still one more in back pocket for Mello here to work with as he's now working his way forwards. Leon makes it a double. Does Mello know about the player sat on stairs? I'm not too sure he does. I think it was... I'm not even sure who it was working his way. It was Deepak. Of course it is. He's trying to work his way forwards here, but with the smoke blocking his path will drip away ever so slightly. And now with the fuser in hand, they can try and make this work once more. They could, two versus three, need to be finding themselves a kill, really. 53 seconds left to go, so plenty of time for them to work with. And Do if the know. next kill goes their way and they get into a 2v2, oh. you start really feeling it, but there comes crying. Big moment for Rogue as they cut this down to a one versus three for Heroic. Now, Diffuser down cold on the ground, 35 seconds left to go. There is time for Grizzly to work with, but it's going to be kills that he has to prioritise here. And Rogue, they are not going to peak anything they're just gonna wait on every angle for him to push through does he know there's one hard right i think he does he goes in but he's going up against a shotgun and deepak with the one pump takes him down and that is gonna be round number five going to rogue not many thought that we would be saying that it is their first in the game here on villa 4-1 still to heroic and rogue well, they've started fighting. Can they continue? It's a really smart move by Deepet there as well. Just a very small little bit of detail to clock at the round end. Rather than staying static and letting him get pushed on the corner and pre-fired, as soon as he catches any inkling, the sound cues, whatever it might be, that a player is coming through bathroom, he's the one who makes the swing, just to ensure he can't be pre-fired on the spot. So a really smart little bit of play at the end there to make sure Rogue do finally get themselves on the board. It was scrappy at points, but it's around all the same, all the same, Tim. So in this place they're in now, the most they can get back to is that 4-1. It's sorry, 4-2. If they get to that point, it's still not ideal, but it's far from the worst case scenario, which would have been a 6-0 that we looked like we might get to after how the first few rounds went. It certainly did. I'm sure at this point, you know, we've, we've got to, of course, continue to look ahead as well. Um, so as we've said, if Heroic win here outright, then Na'Vi, in order to qualify for the major, need to match or better that result. So if you're a Na'Vi player or fan, you're sweating at the minute because if Heroic come out of this for argument 6-7-1, that means Na'Vi have to beat Wolves 7-1 or 7-0 in order to qualify. That's the degree agree that Heroic are going to here to set themselves up to qualify for the major. This could be almost over if this continues to go as it has been. Whew. All right. That pulls going back out once again in the hands of Leon. Got masterclass by Uno last time rounds on the ace, which sounds weird to say, but yeah, it was a real thing. It did happen. With how things shape up, though, with that pulse, the beauty of playing it on the east side of the map is you get the full view of what's going on outside, what's going on above you. Is anyone pushing in through laundry, for example? It does feed an absolute ton of information. But once again, these calls start to come running, ringing on through from Grizzly on the DKB. So valuable previously in shutting down players like Spoit that were hanging out towards Art Studio. And this time around, it's Deepak uncharacteristically being caught, caught out as the entry death. Setting breach charge. It is unusual, as you say, especially mm. Deepak. He's not really so careful there. and smart with his position. No, him. I mean, we've already seen a couple of times that he's been in the 1v3. He's usually the last player left alive, um, but he's going to be cut down to begin with. Then that leaves us now five versus four. Melo's taken a little bit of damage, not too much. Kanto's taken a lot more spite as well. And so that's going to leave us in a position where there's a couple of rogue players not going to be too keen on taking gunfights. Kanto in particular, because he's a breath away from death. One bullet is likely to see him down and out. Heroic getting themselves inside of the top floor now. They've got control. They're ripping that floor up and making it very uncomfortable for Rogue inside of sight. We're going to get the soft breach charges and everything working together here. Look at the destruction, Des. So much of it as well. If you open everything, there is literally no place to hide. It's why they've got those nine breaching rounds on side. 
you normally see that kind of thing and you think, hey, it's for cover in case the sledge goes down, which I'm sure is what the initial reason for the pick was. But it does give them a lot of ability to open things up. And oh, that is Siege timing and a half. As Melo starts his move, that's when Spoik comes charging around the corner. But it's three quick kills for Heroic Tim. They found a 5-1 half. Rogue are going to be sweating bullets right now. During that round, as I asked you to look at the destruction, I was talking about the floor, but I could also extend that <laughs> to say that I am talking about Rogue at the half. Look at the destruction. Heroic absolutely taking them apart piece by piece. I'm not just talking about the scoreline, Des. I'm talking about the manner in which Heroic have won those five rounds. It has been convincing to say the absolute least. This round is so, so important because right now, if you're a Rogue fan, you're clinging to the fact that Rogue are going to be better on the attack. That all you need is that change of sides if they don't prove that immediately now I feel like this game is over well, if Heroic get this round and it goes 6-1 I feel like it's done well it's basically there look regulation loss they're done overtime yeah. loss still in with a chance it gets difficult they have to get to overtime um, and then they need a Na'Vi win like 7-5 and there's all sorts of things need to happen if Heroic win in overtime for example but it's not going to be easy for Rogue from here. Not going to be easy. They have to prove it. They have to prove it here and now. Well, it looks like, looks like they're thinking they can maybe play the same game that Heroic did. We've got Deepet bringing along with the KB. You've got Leon on the Osser, plus that Finker coming along from Spoit. And crying, living his 18-year-old days, he's getting back on the Ash as well. Not quite looking to play entry, I imagine. We've seen Ash, you know, over time sort of, not so much slip away from being an entry, but definitely favours more making good use of the utility she brings along as well. However, in this lineup, really, probably is the operator you are looking at and saying, yeah, should be the entry alongside Kanto. So I like the lineup and the intent of coming out of Rogue, but whether or not they can actually get through to the end of a round with a win after being down and hammered so much throughout the game is a different conversation. Utility not being given away there, but Kanto able to find the yokai that was left pretty much out in the open, unprotected. Uh, five versus four as Kanto manages to follow it up with a kill as well. Melo just pinging out the position of the player as he tries to push him, but he's not going to get any damage dealt to him. Penja, he's going to need to try and stop this push coming in through bathroom and Astro because it could be dangerous. He gets full white flash. He's surely finding himself in a position where his days are going to be numbered. Benja is peaked around the corner as Spike manages to find the kill with the finger five versus three and rogue they're injecting some pace some passion into this matchup on villa and showing us there's that they might just be up for this fight you're in a five versus three you've still got two more sims coming out from spoit to get him back up to near full hp Things are looking good. They've got a lot of utility to play with. The smoke's in back pocket, for example, on two members. Leon almost losing his life there for free as he takes a quick tag in the arm. But at least for now, keeps himself alive and Spoit can use him. And, of course, Leon back towards that full HP mark. Are we going to see one of those games, Des? Is it going to be one of those games where Honestly. Rogue now on the attack are able to fight it all the way back to overtime? And it's just that one of the halves is just that powerful heroic. They're going to be hoping not. They've got the majority of the job done. They are so close to that reward that they want. But you've got to remember, as I said, even if heroic win this in regulation time with an eye on the major, Na'Vi need to better or match what they do here. So every round that Rogue gets makes it easier for oh that position dear. to slip away from Heroic. But right now, the round is slipping away. It's slipping away from Rogue, Des, as two kills have come in for Heroic, and it's three versus three. Not even with much effort as well. Both of those kills going over to Grizzly. It's the day of the bat line, as it feels like. Uno and Grizzly both putting on one hell of a show, eight and one and six and two, respectively. Real strong show, but crying and Kanto there just taken down also the flick of the wrist by Grizzly. No real worry at all. Kanto is having a slow day overall, it's not looking too good. Out comes Uno, finds one with the shotgun, but now the rest have got to try and force their way in. Leon forces his way in, but can't find a two. Grizzly's down to a three. Mello another. It's looking dire, Tim. Rogue are one round away from not making a repeat appearance at a major.
I just honestly don't see any way that they win it from here, Des. Um, you know, are Rogue capable of proving me wrong? I believe that they probably are. But will they? That's a whole other question. And with the way Heroic are playing right now and the position they know that they can place themselves in, they're going to leave Na'Vi not being able to allow Wolves more than one round here. And that is just going to be setting the difficulty to extreme. So Heroic, they know the position they're in. I honestly... I think this might be over here and now. I'm not sure there's anything Rogue can do to steal this away from Heroic. They've got a real death grip on this game and they're taking us to dining and kitchen to try and finish it off. Whew, all right. I can't believe that we're staring down the world where Rogue may well not be returning to the Major after the one that just won. It's the curse, Tim. It's we've wild. said, it, we've it's said wild. it so many times. Teams win big events and then just disappear for at least six months. Think about SSG. Yep. Think about Phase. TSM. TSM. Think about FaZe. Yeah, they literally like, think about Team NIP. One. They all line up and it's just happening again. I don't know why it's such a thing, but it does keep on happening. It's one that you almost don't want to win a major. No. <laughs> you, you don't want to take give the me, punishment Give me second place. Give me second Grizzly. place. <laughs> yeah, let me get to the final. Let me have the day. Let me have set. I'm, I'll be honest. I'm sure a lot of play, a lot of teams who finished second would tell oh, you something Mello, different. Melo, he's going to get cut down as he goes for the jump out. I'm not sure why Heroic are getting quite so overexcited here, Des. They've played so well so far. Grizzly and Melo both going for jump outs. Doom on the doorway here. It's like they've got that taste for blood in the water and they feel that they can go out and just grab it, just grasp it. But they need to make sure that they're not grasping a stinging nettle here, Des, and give Rogue an opportunity to get themselves back into this. I mean, truthfully, Tim, if Heroic have anything, it's time. They're up six and one. They've got five rounds in a row that Rogue somehow need to scrape together after only having found one so far. And sure, there's that worry, that threat that Rogue could bounce their way back into it. But Heroic right now are going to be brimming with confidence. They're confident they can get this one done. Even if it means one or two rounds slip by the wayside, they'll still be confident in themselves to close it out. The thing to remember, I completely agree with you, but the thing to remember, as I've said, for Heroic is every round that Rogue win here makes it easier for Na'Vi. It makes it easier for Na'Vi to steal away. I'm not saying that is going to be easy. They've got to beat Wolves, and that's not an easy task, as everybody in EUL has found out over the last couple of stages. But that is why Heroic need to focus. If they lose this round and it's 7-2, for example, and Na'Vi manage to win 7-2, not losing this round and winning 7-1 would have got them the spot at the moment. So they need to keep that in mind. They need to avoid any losses. It's five versus four. There's one minute 10 left on the clock. Mm. Rogue. Oh dear, oh dear. Here we go. This could be a huge play from Heroic. I feel like they started out so well, Rogue, but then Heroic disappeared into the shadows of the basement and now are looking to make their move. Do they know? They know about the one up towards the left here as well. They're going for the trade, but can't quite find him. Crying. He gets away with a freebie there onto Benja. The backstab dealt with expertly well by the members of Rogue. Crying specifically. But from this point forwards, they've got that numbers advantage. They've still got to see it through to the end. He's got away with daylight robbery there as crying, to be honest. Look at his health. He barely took any damage. You know, he's going to hit a big nitro, though. And that <gasps> might just bring him no. away back into this. Crying's looking for the challenge. Can't find his man. Four versus three. 30 seconds left to go, Des. Oh, Uno's being so cheeky here as well. He could again be the deal breaker for Rogue in this round if they're not careful. Leon, largely unsupported. Diffuser in hand, pushing in on the east while the other members of Rogue have gotten themselves into different spots. Grizzly just lurking in the corner, waiting for the push to come through. Sees the drop down as well, brings down Deepak. There was still one more to come on the push through. This looks like it could be it. There's only two members left alive. Make it one. Rogue are not going to be making a return to the Major as Heroic dash their hopes and all but lock in a spot for themselves. Unbelievable performance from Roic and just every player doing their bit. Uno leading from the front, just leading by example. Heroic at every turn had the answer to Rogue and I just feel like, Des, that one might have been lost from the very beginning, from the map ban stage, letting Heroic take them to Villa just feels like it was a big mistake. Easy to say in hindsight, but the proof is in the pudding and there will be no pudding for Rogue. They've gone trick or treating and they've had a horrible trick played upon them, it feels like, Tim. No major. Wow. 
That still feels crazy to say after winning the last one to come back and not even qualify for the next, but proving even they aren't immune to the curse that has caught many a team over time. I'm still baffled, but I've got to give it to Heroic. What a game they've played there, Tim. That's it. You know, and now they are in absolute pole position. I've said it throughout. Na'Vi need to match or better. So they need to beat Wolves 7-1 or 7-0. Oh, dear. Oh, dear. <laughs> Feels like a bit of a tall order given how well Wolves are playing. But... If we look back towards last week, for example, the 8-7 uh, loss, I guess, for Rogue last week, it just goes to show every round counts. And in this case, it's not going to count for them, but it may well still help for Heroic in that war against Na'Vi, assuming, of course, Na'Vi can beat Wolves. And that is our next game coming up after a short break. We'll head there now when we come back as Spooky Death will break it down for you, and then we'll get into game four. Ta-ra!